is Ellery. I have been a father now for seven years. And what did I want, what I want to share with you are one of the experience that I, that I got from my kids and what they taught me. Uh, generally I teach them, but there was one occasion where they actually taught me something. And what my children revealed to me is what's re relevant to you as well, is that uh, we use and abuse uh, a part of our body uh, every day, and that's our brain. And within our brain, uh, what I'm talking about is the use and abuse of your imagination. Uh, so what, I, what I'm about to reveal to you is backed by tons of research, and I, I only use credible resources. So in raising a family, it's, it became very much apparent that kids are so much different than we are. And in one of those, you'll notice, if you ever hang out with kids, is that they're very happy, and they have very vivid imaginations. And they use this on a daily basis. Now, there seems to be a connection between happiness and, and the imagination. In Evelyn Lynn's blog, she said that imagination is the seed of the feeling of joy. And what we found out is that when we use our imaginations, we're actually releasing endorphins, which makes us happy, makes us feel euphoric. So why are kids so happy? Is they are releasing these endorphins. And in fact, what they're doing is they're really creating their own happiness. And they're very good about doing that. So let me ask you something. Where is the happiest place on earth? And of course, you're going to say Disneyland, right? Uh, other, other than Miss Pope's class. Yep. Uh, so when, when I went to Disneyland, I just thought, okay, I'm going to go for the kids. It's going to make them happy. And what I found out is when I left, I didn't think about how much money I spent or anything like that. It was just, I'm glad I went. I relieved a lot of stress. So what happens is uh, when you get there, you find out that with a little help with Disney, they kind of get the, the momentum going, the ball rolling, on using your imagination. So what I found is when I jumped on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, I was actually a drunken pirate floating around in the river, uh, dodging bullets and cannons, and it was all very, it seemed very real to me. And when, you're, when you use your imagination, when you're able to detach yourself what you find out is you, you open these floodgates of brain chemicals coming in to make you feel better. So really, you can, you can also manipulate how you feel if you actively use your imagination in a positive way. Uh, not only that, you can manipulate who you are. As an example, uh, Dr. Martin Russman said that if you focus your imagination on a personal quality that you want to acquire, uh, you, you basically can have whatever you want. So as an example, let's say you have a, a very low self-esteem and you want to gain some self-confidence. All you have to do is act like you have self-confidence and eventually it comes true. So as you guys have probably heard before, fake it till you make it. So if you tap into your imagination, what you're really doing is you're just waving your magic wand. This is what I want. And if you focus enough energy on it and you do that every day, it eventually comes true. Uh, so, definition of imagination, accor according to Ramez Sasson, who authored uh, Success Consciousness, he said imagination is the ability to form a mental image of something that is not perceived through the five senses. So, think about when you're using your mind, how often do you actually go beyond those five senses? Uh, so it became apparent to me as I'm raising my children that, again, they have a very vivid imagination. And where I really saw that is when I came home one day, I asked them what they're doing. They tell me they're going to go hunt for Bigfoot. So I thought, well, this would be really cute if I got this on, on my iPhone. So I grabbed my iPhone. I'm interviewing them. You know, what, what do you do? How do you capture Bigfoot? And how are you going to go about this? And what are you supposed to wear? And I'm following around the house. We go outside. After 30 minutes, I get tired. But what I found out is they, they wouldn't have stopped if I didn't. And the whole time throughout this half an hour, they're using their imagination the entire time. So what I learned is that kids, they don't put limitations on themselves like we do. So as adults, we are very good about 
about using our imagination too. Uh, only most of the time we abuse it and use it in a very negative way. So you find out that imagination is very powerful. It's a very powerful tool that you have available to you. Unfortunately, we use it uh, on the other side of the spectrum. And what that is is uh, with worry and stress. So such as, is my girlfriend or boyfriend, are they cheating on me? Or is my boss going to can me today? This is how we actually use our imaginations. So my challenge for you is to use your imagination. When you leave here today, use your imagination in a very creative and innovative way instead. Uh, tap into your genius, in other words. Albert Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And so basically, we always associate Einstein with how smart he is, right? But what he's telling you is that doesn't matter. Smartness, intelligence, that doesn't matter. So what he did is he exercised his creative muscle on a daily basis. As a result, you know what the results are. So in our eyes, he would be like a bodybuilder of being creative, right? And the only difference between you and a bodybuilder is going to the gym. Uh, Steve Chandler, who wrote 100 Ways to Motivate Yourself, uh, he said, to experience Einstein's creative level of thinking, all you have to do is habitually use your imagination. So all of us in this room, then, are Einsteins. Yeah. But only a few of us will dare to believe it. Another powerful message that Chandler brought was, that people who, habit who habitually assess their imaginations, or access their imaginations, they're often held by their colleagues as geniuses. So I'm gonna be the first one to tell you that you are a genius. Now let that resonate for just a few seconds. So you, you, I'm talking to you, are a genius. Now, you don't believe me. You're coming up with reasons why you're not. And I'm just proving to you how we use our imaginations in a very negative way. We're very good at this. So just to prove how your way of thinking can actually change your life, I want to introduce to you Joshua Foyer, who's a scientific journalist. And he wanted to, well, what he found out was how you can tap into your mind's potential. So he attended the U.S. Memory Championship in New York. It's just annual event where all these all these guys and gals get together and they they have a contest on who has the best memory. One of one of which was, for an example, uh, thirty six decks of playing cards memorized in one hour, or a four thousand binary digit memorized in thirty minutes. So, as as he started to interview for the article, he found out that none of, none of the people that, that attended this event consider themselves geniuses or savants. And they all said, I only have an average memory. We are only using techniques that were available to us, have, have been available to us for the last 2,500 years. The same techniques that Cicero used to uh, memorize his speech. So he became more involved. He attended more of these championships and to further understand, he decided, hey, I'm going to practice using my memory. I want to see what's really going on in these people's minds as they're doing this. So he did this for a year. And to serve as a good epilogue, what he decided to do is, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter the contest. So he enters the contest, and his, it completely backfires because he ends up winning the contest. Huh. And so what he proved is that he just thought of himself as average, but he really proved is how, how much of a potential our brain really has. And if you use it the right way, you can have astounding results. So how do we exercise our imagination? I'm going to take you to the movie theater. So I want, you, I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to, so you're going into the theater, I want you to hear the voices around you. I don't want to hear it, but I want you to actually hear what somebody's actually saying. I want you to see somebody walk by that you actually recognize. I want you to feel the softness of your seat. 
you're smelling the butter coming up from the popcorn, and you taste the salty popcorn as it goes down your throat. So you can go ahead and open your eyes. So this is how you exercise your imagination. You go somewhere else. And if you do this on a daily basis, you're going you're gonna to find uh, uh, results for yourself as well. So you do this every day. When you exercise your imagination, you're actually exercising control over your life. Because if you let ideas and images come flooding in as they normally do throughout the day, uh, what's happening is, is your life, what that represents is your life being out of control. And if you practice doing this, you actually get back into control of your life again. So if you feel stressed out, you're overwhelmed, I challenge you to take the helm, go somewhere else when you go home. Go somewhere else in your mind and come back feeling eu euphoric and in control 15 minutes later. As college students, we want to be successful in our, in our fields. And if you limit yourself to your knowledge, your contribution to your